Dude, all the six through nine year olds were just losing their crap in the theater when this was happening. <laughs> like, hey, that was kind of cool. Like, I mean, yeah, that was, was kind of cool. It's like, it could have oh, been. I thought that looked janky. Yeah, like, something I really appreciate here is the use of realistic camera positions. You know, to be completely honest, I don't know how they did that. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Stick around to the end to see the easiest way to expand your knowledge. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. There's a specific clip from this episode that I'm very excited to look at from my childhood. Are you ready, Sam? Are you ready, Nico? I'm excited for a couple of these clips. We're looking at some really classic clips here, plus some new stuff. And we got some Ew. kind of stuff, too. We don't like to talk poorly about artists here, but it's always enjoyable to look at a chunky clip and be like, yeah, that's rough. Makes us feel okay about ourselves. <laughs> it's Morphin time! Okay, so this movie is called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It came out when I was like six years old and it was like my favorite movie. Now this is the big climactic battle at the end of the movie. They have all the Megazords coming in and they film the whole thing on a miniature set. Some of these buildings are about like, you know, 10, 12 feet tall. Pretty cool, they're <laughs> filming on a miniature but putting CG into it. This miniature city is killer. It's pretty awesome. So many reflections are happening. They're the most chrome of <laughs> beasts. You might probably know why there's so many reflections, because reflections are easy to make look real, and lighting on non-reflective surfaces is a lot harder. It's a lot easier to make a chrome ball look photorealistic than it is to make a white ball look You know, that's an interesting point, and I don't know how much that influenced their decision to make them all chromed out, but I imagine probably quite a bit. Got a lock on the ooze, man. Whoa. <laughs> it's clearly just a little video clip stuck to the front of the model. And it pops right there. It does pop. <laughs> and it straight up is just like literally a 2D cutout in a 3D. You can tell it's a plane because there's a little gap at the top of it where it doesn't quite reach the roof of the ship. So it's basically just a digital TV screen. <laughs> the pop is really bugging me now where I'm like, <laughs> they're like, sir, it pops. It's like, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> The aerial vehicles in this are pretty good though, because there's just minimal animation on them. There's some pretty convincing shots at least. Considering how limited they were back then, I'm impressed with what they were able to achieve. They actually have the plate photography of the cameras going through the city. You know, these days that would be just completely computer generated, but you have like this really cool atmospheric effect when you capture it in camera like this. And they're basically just compositing the Falcon into the scene. Like, look at that, the lighting's that great. That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's using the tower as a weapon. Time for a little sword play. So a little problem I noticed there is his hand holding onto the post doesn't stick to it. And that's probably because back then they didn't have an animation system to pin the post to his hand. And it's some guy trying to animate the post and oh, the hand right. frame by frame to line up. But they don't quite because you have to just do it by hand. You can't just click a button and have the computer attach an arm to the pole. Yeah. They don't have those animation systems yet. Dude, I still have that problem when I animate stuff. <laughs> Dude, this Gorilla Kong dude. <laughs> uh, he's the hand, and I become the nuts. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just gears inside the robots. Maybe not like CGI budget for two gears inside the robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I remember loving this so much. No, I, no, I thought too. there was so much cool detail, and now I'm just like, wow, there were literally two gears and a spring. <laughs> yeah, dude, all the six through nine year olds were just losing their crap in the theater when this was happening. <laughs> like, everyone was just chugging apple juice. They're throwing it. It's great. <laughs> Pizzas for everyone. <laughs> Hey, wait, that's good animation suddenly. Look at that. Oh, that, yeah, that, that looks really good. That's like motion capture. Like, that is not hand animated. <laughs> I, that, was, that was hand animated. No, look at, the guy look at that. So well done. Every animation I've ever seen from this era looks like booty. <laughs> and that suddenly got the most natural, organic, fluid motion I've ever seen. Yeah, that's, that's, that's animated. By hand? Yeah. I think not. Yeah. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. Okay, we're now we're at hand animation again, see? See how suddenly it looks like hand animation? I do see what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's night and day. How did they get the roll so smooth? I feel like there was, it was something where they used photo reference or footage. Just like the older animation techniques in certain Disney movies where they would film someone dancing and then effectively trace over it. It must have been reference and just really animating to reference. I want to give a big shout out to all the people who spent late nights getting that original Power Rangers movie out because it was so hype in those theaters. 
when I was eight. <laughs> yeah. So all you parents out there who took your kid to see this movie and you're just like, ugh, the things I do for my kids. Thank you. Thank you. It's morphin' time. Do it better than anybody you ever seen. So in 2017, they made another Power Rangers movie. Man, look how far we've come. Yeah, and so now obviously we're having all of the modern day mm -hmm. visual effects that you've come to get used to, like destruction, rubble, smoke, fire, motion blur. The thing is, this is all hand animated too. There might be a little bit of motion capture for the big guy, but probably not. This is probably still all just animators doing their thing. But it's yeah. worth mentioning, if there's an animator in 1995 that's good, they've been doing it for two years, three years, four years max. And now you have somebody who could have been an animator for 25 years. Something I'm now realizing again that I really appreciate here is the use of realistic camera positions. It's the same sort of thing that made Specific Tim so great. <laughs> Sorry. Pacific Rim worked really well because it always felt like the scale worked. You know, you're seeing it from the ground, you're seeing it from inside a cockpit, and you don't have any of these really fast moving cameras. Look at that! That's sweet. A freaking molten sword came out and blew through a building and... That's pretty sweet. That that's, a, cool. that's a great angle for it. And everybody's moving slowly, which is what they should be doing. Yes. They're gigantic. And yes. back in the day when they'd film people in rubber suits doing the fights, they'd film them in slow motion so they looked big. And they're staying true to that. Kimberly, throw a hook now! They're using the dirty lens effect all over the place here. That technically would imply that there's a camera in this scene filming it. Does that immerse you more or does it pull you out? I think it, in this situation, immerses me more because it feels like every time I'm seeing something, it feels like I'm actually seeing it from an actual position. But by that statement, each time you see like glow or bloom on an image, you're like, ah, I'm, I'm not immersed anymore because I can tell that bloom is happening from lens artifacting. It's the whole thing of like, sometimes you do visual effects, not to make it look real, but to make it look how it would look if you did it practically, but it was still a movie. Well, yeah, because this entire sequence is entirely computer generated. The whole town is computer generated. So they have to add as many lens tricks as they can to kind of help make you think that this is real. You've talked about that before. Where it's like, we're not trying to make reality. We're trying to make Hollywood reality. What have we come to expect when we see these movies? I've gone back and forth on this one a lot and I've come out on the other side of it going, it's good. I would recommend giving the Power Rangers movie a, a look if you skipped over it. Today, we're doing something very special. It's a special occasion. We are not going to ask you to subscribe. Instead, feel free to check out CorridorDigital.com and maybe sign up for a membership. We have all our videos there, ad-free, exclusive shows. It's great. It's a cool place. Some say cooler than YouTube. And if you don't want to pay for the subscription, guess what? You get a free trial. This is such a cool scene. You've seen Power Rangers and your father's like, all right, we're leveling up. You wanna see, you wanna see a cool movie? And you're like, all right, now you're like 10. And you're like, okay, let's do this. I remember being terrified of these blades. I remember this cave as like a place. Like when I think about this scene in <laughs> yeah. that cave, I know where that is. Jehovah begins with an eye. J. It's a matte painting with the miniature in the foreground and then a little thing on the top. Ah. Beautiful. I know they did a lot of really cool matte paintings in this movie. So how do you guys think they did this shot? Um, well, that's projection mapping, but how would they have done that projection mapping back then? What if it's just a practical set? Like they actually it's did that. It's just a practical set. That's practical, except it's a miniature. So they filmed Harrison Ford on a blue screen, but what you're seeing there in the background, that's, an, that's a miniature and they literally painted that bridge so that it blended in and you couldn't see it until the camera moved. Oh, I'm seeing the wobbly feet now. Ah. I'm seeing the blue screen tracking. It's that film jitter. Yeah, it's that film jitter, but you know, no one cares because they're looking at this crazy optical illusion. Yeah. At the time, it's like, how the heck are you going to projection map anything? There's no such thing. But that being said, it's like, that is still projection mapping. You know, it's the same thing when you see like artists doing chalk drawings on the street and it's only an image when you view it from the right angle. But when you get up and standing on top of the chalk drawing, it's a stretched thing. Oh, dude, which cup is it going to be? Which one was Jesus's cup? She should like, you should pick this fancy gold one. <laughs> Jesus would drink out of this one. He would slurp out of this. What is happening to me? 
Oh. Oh, cool. Dude, his hair growing like that? Oh, wow. God, what a shot. Well, right off the bat, that hair growing, I know how they did that one. That's easy. It's actually really easy yeah. to tell if you look at the background. Oh, it's, yeah. it's reversed footage. <laughs> they, they start out with the hair outside, and then they pull it through the head of the model, then they play that back, and it looks like it grows. And it's funny, they didn't even bother to hide the flames in the background going the wrong way. Watch the fire, you can see the fire burn backwards. That's great, that's great. That's a fun little detail. So, but then it comes to this. You know, to be completely honest, I don't know how they did that. It's definitely done stop motion. Wrong! There's no stop motion in this. What? <laughs> like, look at the suit. The suit ages and blackens and sh oh, begins shredding. You're totally right. The suit is stop motion. I'll give you that much. If you watch his jaw on the left there and you watch closely, you, you'll get some digital artifacts happening that maybe can help cue you in a little bit. Are we seeing morphs? You are seeing some morphs. Okay, so I imagine that they probably created four different practical heads and each head is going through the same motions, and then they're overlaying those and cutting between them and then morphing between them. You got it, you nailed it. They built an animatronic dude, and they programmed his motions for the entire performance. They have it animated, so like they have stuff on the inside that can pull the nose back and pull the eyes back and stuff, and it goes as far as it can. And they take that latex head, they make a mold of it, make a new head, mess it up even more, stick it onto the same animatronic, so it's all motion controlled. The animatronic's doing the exact same performance every time, then all they're doing is picking the end of when you want to see one animatronic head and morphing it into the next one. But how did they get the skin to like literally boil and crumple like that? That's actually practical. What they did is they had like an underlying skull and they put plastic that shrinks under heat mm -hmm. on top oh. of that skull and they took styrofoam cups, melted them down using a solvent and then painted that over it to give it like a skin layer and then they blasted it with heat. That shrink wrap plastic shrinks and it pulls all the skin with it, creating the effect of all the skin getting peeled back from the skull. Wow, that must have taken a long time to do. The moment you start filming it to the the time you're done is like weeks potentially you know like we talked about motion control of cameras we can replicate the same camera motion so you can like comp two people in the shot but imagine doing motion control for a character so the character is doing the exact same actions so you can blend between different states of that character and have it line up visually and not have any issues and it's one of those things where you watch it and you're like i don't know how they did it it's a magic trick and I love those kind of visual effects moments. All right, so this is a bad effect shot that was recommended to us in the comments. So if you guys, oh. good effect shots, bad effect shots, you know the drill. Leave a comment. It really helps us out in picking out shots for the show. Whatever happens next is on you. So all I know about the order is that it's about werewolves, but I guess there's not a lot of werewolves in it. Sorry, spoilers. This is also the end of the season, so whatever. Okay, here we go. He's getting snapped. Okay, okay, so some some particles. So far, some... it's pretty cool. I'll see you now. It's kinda aging, you can see his face get gray. <laughs> Wait, that was it? <laughs> that was it. That was that's, it? That's the finale. <laughs> That's, that's a big moment. Hey, that was kind of cool. Like, I mean, yeah, that what? was, was kind of cool. It's like, could it be- I thought that looked janky. Yeah, like, obviously this isn't like Avengers, like, endgame snapping kind of stuff. And obviously that's the best crumbling slash person dissolving effect of all time. I'm defending this. I'm putting my foot down. I'm, I'm on board with that. It, it doesn't make me go, oh, look, I know a button they press to get that effect, which is usually when you see a bad effect, it's like this default setting. But you look at this and it's like, you know, the turbulence isn't it's, half bad. It's, it's, yeah. it's pleasing to watch. Especially when his shoulder first starts disappearing there you can actually like really see the turbulence causing it to chip away and fly away and come on that's not bad you guys are right it's not the worst effect in the world or anything like that my biggest critique of the shot is where his body is melted away he's just a floating head but it's just still locked to space as if he's still standing there it just makes it feel pretty flat and like somebody's just dissolving the footage with particle effects on the side of it i actually enjoy looking at it i enjoy watching it mostly for the particles yeah i like particles and i like fluid mechanics me too i i could go for a good particle sim anytime. <laughs> this is one of the strangest videos we've done. It's such it's a good like... video. This is when Ren unlocked how to do really, really amazing smoke simulations. Octane had literally just released the ability to render out volumes like smoke and fire. And we're like, what can we do with this? This is like brand new. We don't know what to do. Vape God. <laughs> 
<laughs> he looks like Jake as an old farmer and his crops are dying. <laughs> Look how upset he is. Here comes the vape god to make new clouds. So that'll <laughs> rain. Look at, the, look at the holy vape that he has. That plant growing looks great though. The little snaps that it does as dude, it pops up. That's just straight up After Effects, dude. That's a 2D image that you need, Yeah, right? it's just 2D images. Oh, I took a hit from the holy vape and no. I died. I'm very proud of that shot. That, yeah, yeah, that transition shot. Just literally a 2D image of Nico is tracked into that shot. Dude, I love Sam with the, the vape that you have that you pass it to him. It becomes giant. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, in this shot right here. Oh, amazing. So this whole camera move here, Nico's not there, but you tracked him into the shot yeah. and use that as like a bit of a subtraction mask for the smoke yeah. when it's first going out. Not to toot our own horns, you know, but like toot not, toot. Not to blow our own vapes. But. <laughs> Yeah, but it's pretty good. What a ridiculous video. That's it. Four and a half years ago. Holy shit, time flies. You know what's funny and satisfying is when you release a video years ago and you're like, ah, I didn't get that many views. And then you just wait a casual five years and it has eight million views now. And you're like, ah, it did well. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, that video eventually uh, lived up to my expectations. <laughs> So guys, tomorrow a video is coming out that I'm very, very happy with. It's this brand new camera that's incredibly lightweight. In fact, it's so lightweight that for the first time ever, we're able to put an HD high quality camera on the back of a Falcon. Really, really awesome looking footage, really cool opportunity, and that video comes out tomorrow. Subscribe so that you do not miss out. So we are all about learning on this channel because we ourselves are always learning. And if you're looking for a place that's focused on learning, you should check out Skillshare. They have classes in pretty much everything, whether you want to learn how to cook better, write better, draw better, make videos better, or just be at peace with yourself better. They have lessons from all types of different individuals for all types of different individuals. For example, a lot of people rent apartments. Skillshare has a featured class right now on interior design for renters. It's called reversible interior design. The whole point is, is when you move into a place, you're gonna want that security deposit back. So how do you go about doing interior design in a way that's non-destructive? It's a pretty cool concept for a class to be taught about interior design. And it's a good demonstration of all the crazy different types of classes and knowledge that Skillshare has to offer. Most Classes are under 60 minutes, so those lessons will fit into any schedule. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So whether you're a working professional looking to hone your skills, or just somebody looking to find a new hobby, Skillshare has a whole variety of classes just for you. So go check them out. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will get 30% off of an annual premium membership. And if you've already used a free trial, you can still use this deal as well. All right, back to the end of the video. <laughs> Every Sunday, we do a visual effect of our own, which gives us the right to come here, sit down, and roast these clips. If you want to see these VFX that we're doing and judge for yourself whether or not we're qualified to do this show, subscribe and watch our videos every Sunday. Wait, we do other things other than VFX? Yeah. I know, people are always like, ah, oh, they only ever do VFX artists react. And it's like, no, we do a lot of other stuff. We've been putting cameras on random things for years. <laughs>